Hello, class. Hello. Thank you for inviting us for this podcast. I was absolutely blown away last time I was in your classroom. It was a curiosity to learn more about flood forecasting and wave overtopping. And I couldn't answer all of your questions, but I do know a man who can. So today we're very lucky to have a specialist in coastal numerical modeling. Welcome, Dr. Stokes. Would you mind introducing yourself? Hi, uh, thanks, Mr. Nelson. Um, my name is Kit Stokes. Uh, I'm a doctor of coastal science at the University of Plymouth in England. Um, so you might be wondering what a coastal scientist does. Um, basically, I spend my time looking at the ocean and beaches and cliffs and everything around the coast. And I study things like waves, tides, coastal erosion, coastal flooding, anything to do with waves, sand, tides and beaches, essentially. Uh, we even get to go out and do some fun things like storm chasing. So when there's a really big storm coming, we'll go out and we'll try and measure it. We'll try and measure how strong the wind is and how big the waves are and how much it moves the beach around. Uh, so that's one of the more exciting things I get to do. Uh, now, I've heard that there are some questions you guys have got for me today. Uh, would someone like to ask the first question? I'm not sure who's got the first question, but do you want to fire away? What country in the world is most at risk of coastal flooding? Ah, OK, now this is an excellent question and I'm going to try not to give a complicated answer, but it is actually quite a complicated thing because it depends which way you look at it. Now, there are some countries in the world which are very low, so they, they're only just a little bit above sea level. Uh, places like the Maldives and these other kind of low lying islands. They've only got a very small distance between how high the sea is and how high their houses are. So they are very much at risk of coastal flooding. But when you start to think about it in terms of how many people are at risk, then it would be a country like India that has something like two million people at the coast that could be affected by coastal flooding. Bangladesh and China, they've got these big populations by the coast. Uh, mean, which means a lot of people could get affected by coastal flooding, especially in the future. I hope that answers your question. All right, who has got the next question then? How many satellites are there that forecast the weather? Now, this is a great question. I have to think hard about this one. Um, now, it's an interesting one because satellites themselves don't forecast weather. It takes uh, to, to predict things in the future. You need a computer with a model that sort of does a simulation of what's going to happen over the next few days. But satellites are used a lot in that process because satellites go out and they collect data about what's happening right now and they feed that to the computers that do the modeling. OK, now I looked into how many satellites there are. It seems there's about 20 that are specifically used for, for weather uh, data. Uh, there's about four that the Americans have. There's about four that we, the Europeans have. Um, so there's about 20 of these satellites dotting around the world. Some of them spin around the Earth from the North to the South Pole, and some of them stay hovering over a particular place. Like there might be one hovering over us right now, looking down and checking out the weather right above your school at the moment. So there's about 20. I hope that uh, gives you a better picture of that one. OK, who's got the next question for me? Um, how powerful is the supercomputer that you use and can you compare this to a of PlayStation? OK, good question. Well, I'm going to disappoint you slightly because we don't use a supercomputer ourselves. I use a single desktop computer, just a normal everyday computer, um, but that only does certain bits of our flood forecast. We get a load of data from a supercomputer that the Met Office have. So the Met Office are a big organization that does lots of weather forecasting and we get data from them. They've got an amazing supercomputer there. So their supercomputer has, let me get the numbers right on this, it has 460,000 computer cores. Now these are the little things inside the computer that does all of the number crunching. And the more cores you have, the more powerful the computer is. So to put that into perspective, um, who knows about the PlayStation 5? Has anyone seen a PlayStation 5? Yeah, it's kind of the latest PlayStation. Right, cool. So this supercomputer the Met Office have is more than 50,000 times 
more powerful than a PS5. That's like 50,000 PlayStation 5s all linked together to make one computer. So pretty powerful. Okay, who's got the next question then? How big are the coastal floodgates and have storm surges ever gone over them? When sea level rise, will they be relevant in the future? Another great question, yeah. Um, they are pretty big is the answer. There's a, there's a big floodgate around uh, the Thames in London, the big river we have that runs through London. Um, that's obviously quite important because there's a big city that could be at risk of flooding. So they've got this big gate across the Thames and whenever they get a big storm surge or a big high tide and they, they're worried about the city flooding, they'll lift these barriers up. Now the Thames barrier is about 20 metres high. So that's uh, roughly the height of a house, 60 feet, something like that. Um, now, will it be relevant when the sea level rises? Well, it will for a while. So until about the year 2060 to 2070, so we're talking about 40 or 50 years from now, uh, that floodgate should still be quite good at keeping out the water during a storm. But after that point, they will have to sort of rethink things and maybe build up on top of it or design a whole new barrier. Uh, uh, I think there's one more question. Who's got another question? How many beach profiles do you have that feeds into your system? OK, beach profiles, yeah. Well, the beach profiles we've got are really important in our system um, because if you if you have a really up to date picture of the shape of the beach, you get a much better prediction of how much flooding is going to happen. OK, so we've got in our system 218 profiles. That means 218 different sort of villages and towns around the coast where we can predict the level of coastal flooding risk. Now in South Wales, there's 33 profiles. So uh, that's kind of your patch. And then in the southwest of England, where I live, we've got 185 profiles. So it doesn't cover the whole of England and Wales, but it covers the southwest of England and South Wales. Hey, are there any other questions? I think I've got a question for you, Dr. Stokes. Cool. Let's say there are some absolutely brilliant questions from the class there, and I learned so much. Your work sounds fascinating. Um, my question is, what did you do to get from primary school to where you are today? Yeah, good question. Um, well, you've got to work hard in school. That's the first thing, kind of sounds obvious, but, um, you know, to, to get up to working in a university and doing science and research, you have to have um, you have to have quite strong grades in your exams. So when you get to GCSEs and A levels, you have to start to think about what subjects you'd want to do, and you've got to try and do really well in them. Um, so I I did a I did some science in my A levels. Uh, I did physics, and that physics degree enabled me to go to university and study uh, a degree uh, in ocean science. And then there are different things you can do at university to work your way up. So you, you do a degree and then you do a master's degree and then eventually you can do a doctorate, which is when you become a doctor of, uh, of science, basically. Uh, so you've got to just keep working really hard at school and university and eventually you get a, you get a job at a university. That's brilliant. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, class. Um, what do we say to Dr Stokes for giving us his time today? Thank you for your brilliant questions. That was really Bye interesting. Bye-bye. <laughs>